A couple of how the shortcomings are, the, the, I think at least the three more, most important ones. Health access in Mexico over the last uh, 12 years measured by Coneval. This is actually a place in which Mexicans improved substantially. It's not uh, the best number still, but it was much worse 12 years ago. And this is a lot of what the Seguro Popular was. The Seguro Popular was a, a policy implemented, first implemented by the Fox administration and then continued by the Calderon and the Peña Nieto administration that essentially gave access to people that have no social security to better health outcomes through a sort of private insurance type mechanism which is called the, was called the Seguro Popular. It was not as a private insurance like the US has, which is dramatic and absurd. Uh, it was a better system uh, and it was by no means perfect. It, it was used many times for clientelistic and, and electoral uh, uh, incentives for, for clientelistic um, outcomes, but it did improve the access of people to many different health treatments that before they would not be able to, to to get. The most important one was certain kinds of cancers that could be treated with the Seguro Popular. And uh, also the idea of, of nursing homes, um, they, they were, some of them were attached to the Seguro Popular and, and that also gave uh, women especially better opportunities to go to work and, and, and have a better income and not have to stay home and, and, and take care for their children or have to send them with the abuelitos, which is a stupid idea. Um, then, when, you, when we focus on the access to education, it improved, not that much, but uh, we still have a long way to go. Uh, the education part was a lot of it connected or linked to the uh, Progreso Oportunidades Prospera program, because in order to receive the cash benefits that the program offered, the, the women would have to show that their children were going to school, they had to show the report cards, and they had to show also that, a little bit of what happened also with the, with the previous slide, they had to show that they had all of their vaccines um, filled, like the, their cartilla de vacunación was up to date. And, and that, that is a way of forcing people to have to take uh, your, your, your kids to school, especially in rural areas. Uh, and the, the way the, the, the program was constructed to, to force people to, to send uh, their kids to school was that the scholarship or the benefit that they would receive would, go, would increase as those children would uh, grow. Because think of how when they are like first year elementary, first grade students, if you, if you want to, the alternative of sending them to work is uh, not that great because a, a seven year old boy or girl can't earn that much money uh, instead of actually going to, to school. But if it's a middle school 14 year old boy, it's simpler for you to send them to work in the crops instead of going to school. So the, 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 the older the, ki the kids got, the more money they had to receive to incentivize families to keep them there. But also they recognized one key element, which was that women, girls, always had to receive more money in their scholarships than boys. Because, uh, because of how our, our culture is very sexist, if you did not receive that type of uh, benefit, what would happen is that probably more people would just not send their, their, their daughters to school because they should just stay home and, and, and become eventually like take care of the house and have kids. So the, all the time for every single grade level, the, the scholarship giving to girls was higher than to boys. And the, the money was given to the women instead of the men because the men drink it and spend it really stupidly. So it was much safer in the hands of women that they would actually funnel those resources given by the government 
to, to better uh, outcomes. So that's a little bit how these, that this program worked. And it actually incentivized people going to school. And there's different uh, papers that measure how effective it was actually in the part of like education. Uh, but we still have a long way to go because, uh, well, education is something that even if they go to school, doesn't mean that they're receiving the best quality education. And the last graph is population without social security in Mexico. And this is a huge problem. And as you can see, the, even if it improved somewhat, <laughs> we're still very far away from where we should. These numbers show that uh, in 2018, which is the last data point, almost 60% of the population does not have access to social security, which is dramatic. This means that most of these people are in the informal sector. And the informal sector, by definition, tends to have less opportunities and also uh, the, uh, the capacity to generate wealth is smaller because productivity tends to be smaller and, and there's less technology in these type of, uh, of businesses than in, in more form, formal ones and bigger ones. These tend to be smaller businesses rather than bigger ones, obviously, because they are in the informal sector. But there's actually a lot of people that technically work in the formal sector, but because they don't have actually access to social security, no les animes, they are not actually in the formal sector. And we, when you actually consider these numbers, there's a very scary data point that uh, Santiago Levy showed, uh, former um, economist in chief of the Inter-American Development Bank, in his book, Esfuerzos Mal Recompensados from 2018, he showed that when you actually consider this 57.3 number and you add it, add it up with all the people that actually are like strange loopholes within the formal sector such that their employers don't pay them different things that they should receive by law, we're closer to 90% of the population not actually being really in the formal sector, which is dramatic and terrifying, because that implies that a lot of that ye big yellow um, data, sorry, big yellow rectangle that I showed you before of the vulnerable people are, well, uh, th there's a huge percent of the population there, which is why suddenly when a, an economic crisis happens, you have a, or sorry, an increase in the number of, of poor people. Anyway, let's, let's go to break.